morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. Welcome if you have questions or doubts or firm beliefs this morning. Welcome if you are rejoicing today or if you're hurting today. Welcome if your experience of God feels like being lost in the wilderness. Well, your experience of God is that small, still voice speaking to you in the silence, or maybe a little of both. Welcome if you're to people of all genders, all body shapes and sizes, and all colors. Welcome to people of all mental, physical, and emotional challenges. Welcome to Lyndhurst United Church of Christ on Zoom, where we are faithful. Loving and honoring the still speaking God, God. while well, serving our community, our community and welcoming and everyone. So I invite you to take a deep breath this morning. Hold that breath for a couple of seconds. Feel that God's holy presence is holding you and surrounding you in this time of worship. Take a deep breath. Let us worship God together this morning. I invite you to join me in our call to worship. Oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears, ears what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past, stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our our children. We We will will tell tell the next generation generation about about the glorious deeds of the Lord, 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 about about God, our mighty power and mighty wonders. Come, let us worship God and hear a story. God calls us to a time of confession, a time when we open our hearts and our minds to God's holy presence. Let us confess and let us receive God's forgiveness. Merciful God, we want the courage to choose you each and every day. We want to wait for the long watches of the night. When you appear in your glory, we confess that we often fall short of your expectation. And our own expectations of our show. Please help us fill our lamps with your grace. That we might share your light with the people. And with generations to come. Amen. Let us confess silently this morning. Friends in Christ, know that you are a child of God and rejoice that you are forgiven. Thanks to God. God. Well, that was a pretty good one. All right. (laughs) All right.
right. I think the stewardship moment for today is Joni. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your commitment to your pledges that you made last year. It's been so wonderful each month when the consistory meets that we know that pledges are coming in and we have the resources we need to run the church. Um, even in this pandemic, that has been so reassuring to us. It's that time again, you've heard from on three other Sundays from members about how much Lindhurst means to them. And it is time now to reevaluate your giving for the next year. And not just the checks you write, the money you send online. It's about your uh, time and your talents that you are able to share with Lyndhurst and our community. Much has changed. Um, we are looking at each other in little boxes every week and in meetings. and. Um, but you know, what we do at Lyndhurst has remained the same, and that is we are faithful to loving and honoring the still speaking God while serving our community and welcoming everyone. Um, consistory will, after we receive all the pledges, we will be creating the next year's budget. Uh, budgets aren't anything very new to me because um, in the legislature, we create a budget and I have been known as the one that stands up and says our budget is a moral document when I'm talking about the state budget, but so is our budget for Lenhurst. It's our, mm -hmm. it's where we put in writing. We walk the walk, we talk, talk the talk, and we put it into writing what our priorities and goals are and what our dreams are. I know this has been a really difficult year for many of us. And I know we want so badly to be back in our building. Uh, to see each other, to hug each other, um, shake hands, pass the peace in person. It's been really difficult. So I commend you for, for working with us to make sure that we keep our worship going, that we keep the church going. Um, for many years, I've heard the church is not just the building. And boy, has that come true for me this year, that it's more than just the building that we have. But we got to take care of that building. We have stewardship toward that building as well. Um, and as much as I want to see everybody, I want everyone to be safe and uh, and healthy. Um, we are we have kept our commitments to South Louisville Community Ministries. We stepped up because they needed actually more help. We had a yard sale. Uh, I understand that the giving for gift cards is going really really well, and um, I didn't uh, see if we've met our goal, but I know we were near to that goal. We are working continuously to raise money for the after school program, um, which is kind of in limbo because until kids come back to school, um, that that but, you know, we want to be ready when Jefferson County schools open up and, and those children come back to school because we know they need safe places to be after school. And what I like to call is our commitment to the mother church that we that we support our denomination and make sure that the UCC is, is very strong. So I would just encourage you to give prayerful consideration to your pledge for next year. To If you have not filled out your pledge card, uh, please do so either on what was sent to you or online. It really does help us as we get together and start building a budget for next year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I am, I'm so thankful every day that Lynnhurst is here and I have a church family that cares about me and prays for me and I pray for them. Um, so thank you very much. Please be as generous as you can be. I know you will be because you always have in the past. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joni, very much for sharing. Our scripture reading for today it comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter. The kingdom of heaven will be like 12 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish did not take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. 
At midnight, they were aroused by the shout, The bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. And all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We do not have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. God, may your word read and proclaimed this day be for us a lamp upon the way and a light upon the path, that we may go forth confident that we are walking with you. Amen. Amen. Weddings in Jesus' day were long celebrations. Guests assembled at the home of the bride and were entertained by her parents while they waited for the groom. When the bridegroom approached, the guests, including the bridesmaids, lighted torches and went out to greet him. And then in a festive pro pro procession, the entire party walked to the groom's home where his parents were waiting for the ceremony and the celebration to be held afterwards. And that celebration often went on for several days. Jesus, his mother, and his disciples were guests at one such wedding in Canaan. And our story for today, the groom does not show up at the expected time. He may have sent word that he's going to be late, so everyone waits. And they wait. And many of the wedding party fall asleep as the hour grows late. Finally, at midnight, they're awakened with a shout, he's coming. 
The bridesmaids leap up into action, trim their lamps, and head out to meet him. Five of the bridesmaids have used up their oil and they have no reserves. At first, they try to borrow some oil from the other bridesmaids, but they're turned down. And they have to go out searching for a 24-hour convenience store that stocks oil lamp. While the other five bridesmaids go out with the wedding party to the groom's family's home for the ceremony and the party. And when they arrive, they all enter and they shut the doors. So that when the bridesmaids who needed to go find more oil finally arrive, they find the doors shut and locked. <laughs> Professor Lindsay Armstrong notes in Feasting on the Word that in the beginning, all the bridesmaids are alike. They all are appropriately dressed for the wedding and they have their lamps ready. Each of them falls asleep when they wait, as they wait for the bridegroom to arrive. The wise bridesmaids have prepared for a possible delay and they have brought extra flasks of oil. When their faith in the bridegroom's return is tested, they have resources available to sustain them. In the midst of life's joy and pain, ease and adversity, intrigue and boredom, the faith of the wise remains enough. They keep their light shining before others, continuing in community and study and prayer, doing deeds of mercy, offering forgiveness, working towards justice and peace. They hold on to the hope that God's kingdom will come one day. They build into their lives the disciple disciplines and habits that give them hope and empower them to live as people of the kingdom of heaven. Foolish bridesmaids, on the other hand, have not planned ahead and brought extra oil. When their faith is tested, they want to rely on the faith of other people and they lose, they may lose their faith altogether. Oil in the lamps can be understood as faith, good works, spiritual practices, or spiritual reserves that remain constant and shine during good days and challenging days. Professor Armstrong states that is why that the bridesmaids can't share their oil just as we cannot share our spiritual reserves, development, or preparedness, the foolish bridesmaids cannot borrow the resources they need to fill their lamps of faith. So it's really not that the wise bridesmaids are mean or inconsiderate or, or selfish. We have to build up our own reserves. The early Christians had to adjust to the reality that Jesus did not return as they fully expected and that their mission was to wait expectantly and in the meantime to live faithfully, courageously, and hopefully. This is our mission still. Christian hope rests on the trust that the God who created the world will continue to love the world with complete care, with gentle care, will continue the process of creation until the project is complete, and will continue to redeem and save the world by coming into it with love and grace in Jesus Christ. And every congregation, there are people concerned or even frightened by the events of the last four years and the last eight months. Freedom, justice, health, and compassion seem fragile in the face of the forces of oppression 
injustice, violence, and a growing pandemic. Living in hope does not mean immunity to the harsh realities of life in this time. On the contrary, it means living confidently and expectantly, trusting that the God of all creation continues to come into life with compassion and redemption and love and hope. Reverend John Buchanan reminds us that the challenge before us is to have enough oil in our lamps that when the bridegroom appears, we can roll up our sleeves and get to work for the kingdom of God that is always coming and breaking into history. The good news is that the bridegroom will come that the love of God will continue to appear in our lives in surprising and unexpected ways. Jesus comes when people live in hope and never give up. Jesus comes when the faithful disciples express love and compassion and work for justice. Jesus comes when people struggling with COVID-19, cancer, and other serious illnesses, know they are safe in God's love and healing grace. Jesus comes when we welcome, include, support, and encourage people who have a mental health and or physical challenge. Jesus comes when we make responsible decisions to wear a face mask, practice social distancing, and refrain from gathering in large groups. Jesus comes when we reach out our hand to people of all skin colors and offer them equality. Jesus comes when we reach out to our neighbors with words of comfort, sharing in one another's loneliness. Jesus comes when we offer forgiveness and when we receive forgiveness. Heaven breaks into earth when faithful people live in hope and give themselves to the work of the kingdom of God. What is helping you to fill your oil lamp Right now, what is giving you hope? We have an answer, I'd love to hear it. What's giving you hope right now? That we will see an end to this pandemic, that we all follow the guidelines set out for us in this and in what God has set out for us to do. Beautiful answer, Regina. Thank you. <clears throat> A change in leadership. We have all, right. Go we all gone through stuff, you know, polio and scarlet fever and different diseases. And he has brought us through that and he'll bring us through this too. Amen. Just being able to see everybody to come to church every week has given me hope. All right. With my granddaughter's pregnancy, the hope and promise of new life was life's greatest miracle to know that we will live on. Yes. What? Kirby says his quiet time with God. For me, it's all of you that are part of Olympus. You give me hope. You give me hope. This stewardship season, I've asked you to reflect on what is at the center of your life by asking you these questions. What am I making a priority in my life? What am I willing to save or sacrifice for? 
What is most important to me? How am I using my financial resources for God and the church? Today, I'd like to add these questions to your list to reflect upon. Is my oil lamp filled with the oil of faith, prayers, compassion, love for all God's people, and hope? Have I filled a flask with additional oil so that I will not run out of faith and hope when the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths is on the rise, when we need to wear a face mask for weeks and months still ahead, when we cannot get back into our church building, maybe for weeks or months, when we are tired of Zoom and isolation. This story reminds us that our oil lamp need to be filled and we need to be patient. We need to wait and we need to be ready. We need to fill our oil lamps and know that God and Jesus Christ is with us. Fill our oil lamps and not lose hope. Fill our oil lamps and be ready. Fill our oil lamps and wait. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to bring up the words to our hymn. Blessed Assurance. Since my story, the little Christmas 
All right. Do we have any prayer concerns for this morning that you'd like included in our prayers? Let's start with Josh, if you would continue to keep him in your prayers. Please pray for the Flam family upon the death of Phyllis. Please, please pray for the Hemsley and Dave family upon the passing of Ryan. And please keep Reverend Lynn Young in your prayers. She's in the ICU struggling with COVID. Oh. Who else would you like to include in our prayers for this morning? Eva. Yeah. Try again, Eva. Okay, she froze up on us. Anyone else? Judy Cooper and her family. Yes. For Carolyn Discern's cousin, Judy Cooper and the family. Okay, Eva is still... Blessings for Myra as she celebrates her birthday. Yes, blessings for Myra. We will keep her in our prayers. Eva, did you get unfrozen? <laughs> nope. Okay, anyone else have a prayer <laughs> I'd like to share? There you are, Eva. Do you have a uh, prayer concern? Yes, I guess you didn't hear me. No. Um, my sister Doris was taken to the hospital last night from her nursing home. She has fluid on her lungs. Okay, we will keep her in our prayers. For Jim Dewey. He's having oh, surgery tomorrow. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing. For my, my niece, Berkeley, and her family moving to Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, my for, goodness. Uh, uh, military, a military move. Okay, just in time for winter. We will keep them in our prayers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let us pray. God of all blessings, we gather today from many places to be one in your spirit, to be one in your church. We come hoping for a comforting word and to be challenged, to be a light of hope, a symbol of your love, a bearer of your grace. The months of loud campaigning have fallen before the gentle wind of ballots cast. The ground is littered with the hope of those who would have led but were rejected and of those who have tried to lead and are exhausted, and those who are preparing to lead. May we as a nation find unity, mend broken promises, and move forward into the future with hope. We pray with compassion for those who are sick and in need of your healing. For those who are hospitalized and those who are recovering. For the people who have received devastating medical news and are wondering what the next steps are. For people diagnosed with COVID-19. For people living with cancer and other serious health concerns. We pray especially today for Josh and his family, for Reverend Lynn Young, for Doris, for Jim, for Berkeley and her family. We offer prayers of joy for Myra. We pray for the Flam family and the Hamsley Day family and for the Cooper discern families. Today, we also pray for our veterans, those who died while serving, those who died later, and those still with us. We pray for the women and men serving in the Coast Guard, in the United States Army, in the Navy, 
and the Marines and the United States Air Force. May you bless those who are serving and keep them safe. We pray with concern for those who are mourning this day, for the loss of someone they hold dear. We pray for the many people struggling with a mental health challenge, a physical challenge, a substance abuse illness, from a health challenge, from depression, anxiety, and loneliness. We pray for our world, for our nation, for our community, that peace may be lived, that your justice will be done, gracious God, and that all would experience safety and freedom and opportunity. You direct us, gracious God, to pray always and to not lose heart. And so we turn to you in prayer. Please hear our silent prayers. And hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom kingdom come, your will be done done on on earth earth, as it is in heaven. Give us us our daily bread. bread. And forgive us us our debts as as we forgive our debtors. And then we us not temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For the Lord is the Jesus kingdom, and the power, 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 We are stewards of God's house. Our offering gives us the opportunity to participate in the ministry of this congregation and God's ministry in this community and in the world. Our offering allows us to share the good news, to build up, (laughs) to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your continuing generosity to this congregation. Please continue to do online banking, online giving or sending your donations to the church. Your generosity is truly appreciated. So what do we do now? This stewardship season, I've asked you to reflect on what is at the center of your life by asking yourself these questions. What am I making a priority in my life? What am I willing to save and sacrifice for? What is most important to me? And how am I using my financial resources for God in the church? And how am I filling my oil lamp with faith? I encourage you to continue to reflect on those questions. All right, so our announcements for this week. We will be collecting money to allow the staff at Brooklawn and Bellwood to purchase Christmas gifts for the youth. So we're not asking you to go out and and buy gifts this year. We're asking you to make financial contributions so the staff can go out and purchase the gifts for the youth. We have always been so generous to these youth 
let us continue to do our best to be generous this year as well. You can give through your online banking, your online giving, or sending a check to the church. Just put book lawn in the memo line um, so that we make sure your gifts get sent to where they need to be. The deadline for accepting these gifts are Friday, December 4th, so that the staff can go out and buy those gifts in time for Christmas for those you. And then just a reminder that this afternoon at 3 o'clock is the Kentucky Inner Association meeting. You are welcome to join us through Zoom, and you all should have received an invitation to that annual meeting as well. May worship continue wherever you go today. May your compassion extend to each person you meet. May you rest in God's promises. May your oil lamp be filled. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and the coming week. Go in peace. Go be a light of hope. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.